prestige, pawnbrokers are an elite chain of stores. We're it! I'm in the business of making money, and it doesn't matter if it's a handbag, a hovercraft, jewellery, anything. If it's expensive and I can do a deal, I want to get it done. Oh, wow, look at that. Based in London's jewellery quarter. Oh, wow. This is fantastic. And affluent Surrey. I think that's absolutely incredible. They deal in luxury goods. How much are you looking for? <sighs> this time... You were doing something, then? A stash causes a stir. You are joking. There's a massive identity crisis. He hasn't quite got the fact that Snowy's a cat and not a rabbit. And a challenging deal for boss James. Oh, no. What have I done? ..comes to a crashing halt. Oh, God. Welcome to the world... <laughs> ..of posh porn. The UK pawnbroking industry loans around £930 million a year. I've got a ring that I was looking to potentially to sell. Sure. As more people look for a quick way to get cash fast. What sort of money are you hoping to raise? I need to raise about £5,000 if that's possible. My inspiration for setting up Prestige was a light bulb moment, really, when I realised that rich people actually needed money too. And we're prepared to offer you £125,000. Holy macaroni! <laughs> Former property developer James Constantino bankrolls asset-rich, cash-poor clientele. It's a little bit like winning the lottery for me. Hello. With support from assistant Joe... Do not stress, my friend. Everything's fine. James and his team will consider doing a deal on anything that comes through the door. Yay! I'm going to look at pictures of the Mike Tyson. I must admit, I think I look more like Mike Tyson than that does, to be honest with you. <laughs> I think the business is more successful because James is a risk taker. Finding a buyer is going to be a bit like finding a needle in a haystack. He's very, very good. I always say to him he's got the Midas touch. Cheers, James. Cheers. And today, James has had an inquiry about another unusual asset. Look at this, though. This is pretty good. Someone's got a double-decker bus. It's quite an interesting thing to have come in. What springs to mind now is mobile porn brokers. Maybe Joe at the wheel. So we might have to send her on like a quick bus driving course. The bus had been advertised for a long time and he hadn't had any luck. I think he turned to us because he thought we might be able to work our magic. <laughs> our little doggy done a wee wee. The double decker bus is owned by 30 year old entrepreneur Joel. How you doing, you are, guys? My ambition was to make a million by the age of 30. Um, but I'm now 30, so it's now going to be probably 35. <laughs> so it's, uh, I'm sure it happened. Joel runs a number of unique enterprises. What would you like? Um, carrot cake. Piece of carrot cake, yeah. Including a cafe in Hove. We're a normal cafe, but we're a difference. Everything is doggy related. We have uh, doggy pizza, uh, we have doggy cupcakes, doggy donuts, uh, doggy beer, which is popular. It seems like a weird idea, but it actually works really well. <laughs> to begin assembling the cake, we move a disc, one with hand firmly on top. When he's not catering for Hove's hounds, he's using his talents to help his fiance Alex. Bloody hell, you know, it's 15 parts to this cake. I did not sign up for this. The couple are having a DIY wedding in just six weeks' time. It really is special because, you know, it's a wedding. <laughs> We're doing everything ourselves, so why not do our own wedding cake? you got a flower on you. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> so the, the cake we're making is a vanilla, three-tier, naked wedding cake with loads of fruit, strawberries, blackberries, blueberries on each tier, and then maybe a picture of myself from the top, I'm thinking. <laughs> Yummy. Joel and Alex are planning on starting their married life with a new project. I bought an old uh, ground floor one bedroom flat. It's been derelict for two years. At the moment, there's mushrooms growing out the wall. Uh, it, it's a real state. We're going to turn it into a nice two bedroom flat with a garden. Just a little project for us and live there for the next year or two and, and then kind of move on to our dream home. But that requires a hefty deposit. So Joel has put another of his businesses on the market. Welcome to my big purple bus. £4.30, please. 
So we've got a double-decker bus that's been converted into a two-bedroom house. It's an actual business. You can live in it if you wanted to and travel around, or you can actually make money from it from renting out to, to other people. Nice and comfy. I bought it without seeing it. And when I first saw it and I went inside, it absolutely stunk. I thought, I think I've made a bit of a mistake here buying a double-decker bus. It's, it's turned out all right. It's on the market for 55 grand, and I think that's good value for money. I think James will love it. I think as soon as he steps inside and sees what I've done, I think he'll, uh, he'll buy it off me straight away. But will James feel the same when he views the bus? After a recent expansion of the Hatton Garden offices, James has finally got a room of his own. In all my working career, I've never had my own office, and it felt absolutely wonderful to be able to close that door and just get on with stuff. I'm printing the letter. If it doesn't print, then we are screwed. <laughs> We just, Joy's having a problem printing. I'm not so bad, I think, because I'm near it, but I was wondering... I do miss not being around Joe. I wish that was another word for trolley. Huh? Just, just something quite sort of um, satisfying about the sort of droning noise. Wait, my little thing's missing. You know, like, when you get... You live near the M25? Uh, maybe for the first six or eight weeks, you sort of think, oh, God, what have I done? My bloody thing to get into the bank. Oh, there it is. And then gradually you sort of get used to that noise, don't you? The sort of droning, the constant... constant moaning, the din in the background. It's a little bit like that. Its name's Pert. Surname Pert. Ring any bells? <laughs> Back in the day, obviously. Business is booming with up to 7,000 items brought into the pawn shop every month. I'd only need it for about a week. That's all I'd need it for a week, and then I can get some big money for you. And James needs them sold on fast. It's a tall order, but we're going to give it a go. Prestige Joy speaking. So he's launched an online shop, selling everything from jewellery to a suit of armour. The e-shop was my idea. It was another avenue to sell high-end assets. Looking after all the online sales is Joy, his newest recruit. Deal, James. Four grand, yeah. You're on a roll this week, aren't you? Yeah, I am. I love sitting here listening to Joy over there. She's such a good okay, negotiator. Well, she loves a bit of a weeding and dealing, a bit like James. Hi, Susan, how are you? Joy has a number of regular buyers and sellers. OK, you want to come in to see us? Right, so you want to um, bring some items in and um, raise some money to put towards one of these items? Yeah, or you want both of them? OK. Thank you, Susan. Bye. One of Joy's top customers is Suzanne, who lives in Essex with husband David. I'm a demon for, for, for nice things. It's got to be special, and it's got to be different. Suzanne's love of these shop knows no bounds. I'm like a pirate. I, I, I'd love to find this treasure chest. It's got jewels hanging out everywhere. This is when we went to the ball. Up until well, four years ago, one. the couple yeah, lived life said, to the full. Oh, look at me. <laughs> oh, my God. When Suzanne was diagnosed with fibromyalgia, which causes debilitating pain all over the body, life took a different turn. I get very sad when I see people dancing. So um, that's the sad part, because although you can go to those things still... Um, you can't participate. Yeah, you can't thing. participate. But Suzanne has found a new passion, spending hours browsing online. Oh, poor Joy. I do feel sorry for her. I speak to Joy probably at least once a week, if not more. And she's recently seen two new rings which she's desperate to get her hands on. Come and look at these, see what you think. Um, but they cost almost £4,000, so she needs to trade in some of her own designer belongings. I've got about 12 items that I'm going to take to Prestige. Lovely. Including bags. This is amazing. Scarves. This is absolutely gorgeous. And jewellery. Look at that. That's beautiful, Suzanne. I'm hoping to do a, a swap so that I get something that I like. Why are you selling it? It's lovely. 
Suzanne is hoping to be offered £6,000, but will Joy's offer match her expectations? In the heart of London's jewellery quarter in Hatton Garden is the pawn shop's flagship store. Got a couple of bits I'd like you to look at, if you could. They've made a name for themselves dealing in high-end goods. It's actually in excess of 120,000. Whoa! Here in Hatton Garden, we're seeing some amazing pieces of jewellery and some high-end clients coming in to see us. At the front desk, assistant manager Michael is handling new inquiries. Hi. Hi there. Hi, how can I help? I've got a Gerard Perigo watch. OK. I'd like to have a look at, please. Um, what were you wanting to do with it? Um, to... Possibly sell it. Possibly sell it? Yes, yeah, I think so. Yeah. What sort of price do you have in mind for it? Um, I'm not really sure, but... As much as you can get. Yes, um, <laughs> probably around 20,000. Like 20,000. When did you buy it? Uh, no, it was a present from my granddad. Okay. Yeah, he got it as a birthday present when he was the director of Elf Oil. Oh, really? Okay. Yes. Fantastic. And he got it from his <laughs> colleagues, yes. Okay. I need to uh, spend a bit of time with it, figure out what sort of price we can do. Absolutely. Thank you ever so Lovely. much. Thank you. Thank you. Well. Thank you. The watch belongs to 19 year old animal lover Lauren, who's from North London. This is Widget. He's my purebred Hanoverian. I've owned him for a year now. He loves licking everything. Just do one or two walk transitions. Yeah. On a normal day, we're up early, 6 o'clock in the morning. We'll go up to the stables and I'll be there for several hours to ride my horse and give him food and pamper him. Yeah! <laughs> Lauren lives with her boyfriend, Doraj, their cat, Snowy, some fish and a six and a half kilo house rabbit, Biggie. Biggie is our giant continental rabbit, and he's still a baby. It's OK. He's got about 12 months left of growing. What a nightmare you are. <laughs> when Biggie gets bigger, he should be um, about 15 kilos. It's OK. He's more than happy for you to stroke him, but he just don't like being picked up. He gets on really well with Snowy. They tend to have little arguments because Biggie hasn't quite got the fact that Snowy's a cat and not a rabbit. He's like a little toddler at the minute, just running around and causing havoc. Hopefully, when he gets older, he'll be a bit more polite and respectful. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to get really, really big. Yeah. Just had an email come in from a lady called Mariella. She's got a D&G watch that she wants to sell. Lauren and Doraj run a small online jewellery business. Been doing this for two years as a sole trader. How did you get on with the tag here? Yeah, it's just a shoulder needs to be replaced. That's all it is. Apart from that, it's a lovely watch. All this is our jewellery, which we buy and sell. We put posts out on social media asking if anyone's got any old jewellery that you just don't want anymore. It's a really good market to be in. Lauren has received support for her business from her grandfather, who she's recently reconnected with. I lost contact when my grandma and my granddad split up. Since I've got in contact with him, he really has changed my life around. He flew over from Russia to have lunch with me and while we had lunch I told him what I'd been up to and my business plans and everything. He really likes the plans that I presented to him and he gave me a lump sum of £30,000. On top of the cash injection, he's also donated a precious timepiece. Grandad turned around to me and said that he's got a watch that sat in his safe and that he doesn't wear it because he can't read the time on the watch, which made me laugh. The watch is a Girard Perigou limited edition Scuderia Ferrari. It marks the 100th anniversary of Ferrari. It's a very special piece. This beats a Rolex, you know. They're hoping the pawn shop's high-end expertise will help sell the watch. And many we've seen go for between 10 and 15,000, but many go from 25,000 and up. We want 20,000 to invest in a website so we could be international as well as national. I really hope Prestige come back with the full amount that we've asked for. I think that would really help us and able to do what we need to do with our business. It really would be the cherry on top of the cake. Joe. Yeah? What? You 
went, Joe. I didn't. What did you say then? I said, <laughs> You were doing something then. I put money on it. Joe. Oh, you're so silly. Today, e-shopper Suzanne has come to meet Joy and has brought along her collection of designer goods. Yeah, my darling. Nice to oh, finally mm -hmm. see you. Suzanne is one of my favourite customers and it is so great to finally meet her. Yeah, I'll give you that. Let me have a look. Wow, that's nice. It's really sweet. Are you sure? You want to let this go? Yeah. Really? Yeah. OK. If Suzanne's 12 items is able to raise enough money, she'll be able to buy the ring that she saw in the e-shop outright. There you go. In the flesh. Oh, That's my the first. God. Very nice. You like that? Yeah. Yeah. All the lovely items, how much are you expecting? We'll would be looking about five, five to six thousand. Six thousand pounds? Yeah. Well, what I'm going to have to do is you're going to have to leave all this with us for a few days. I know. Is that okay? Yeah. Oh, that was fantastic. Joy was quite um, uh, pleased with the pieces, so I'm quite optimistic that we'll get what we want and, and maybe even a little bit more. Suzanne is feeling confident about her high-end collection, but will the valuation team agree it's worth £6,000? What's all these phones ringing? Amongst Suzanne's many items, one piece is already sparking interest. Joy. Hi, Michael. I overheard that we might have some Vivian Westwood's cufflinks. Matter of fact, yes, we do. <laughs> I can't believe it's the same pair that I'm looking for. I think those suit you, actually, Michael. It's just a little thing, but it's been on my wish list for a while, so it's... Uh... You have a wish list? Yes. Um, uh, can, can I say no, that you're a bit weird? No, no, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure if you ask anyone in this office, they'll have a wish list. Really? James, have you got a wish list? Yeah, I've got a wish list. I wish you not to go back to work. <laughs> James might be cracking the whip at Hatton Garden, but at the Weybridge store, Lawrence is fielding inquiries thick and fast. Good morning. How can I help? I've got some memorabilia. I've got a programme from 1961. I was head Brent's head. Lovely. And I've got some signatures. Is that James Garner, the actor? Yes. I was really excited when Ken and Benzie bought in the racing programme. It's a really unique item. Well, well, you left your wife alone with James yeah. Garner. <laughs> oh, you can believe it. Well, what can I say? Oh, dear idiot. In the years I've been in the train, I've not seen... Is that right? ..the programme of this date with so many of the driver's signatures. You expect to get one or two. Yeah. Oh, it sounds good, doesn't it? Yeah, it might do a bit of good. Yeah. Safe journey home. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Bye. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? Yes. It's interesting to see how it comes out. This is really exciting. I love this programme. I think any real racing fan would. The names in this, which are signed, are incredible. I'm really excited to find a value on this. Punky! Punky, where are you? There he is. Hello, Punky. Hey, good boy. Good boy. The owners of the signed programme are retired couple Bente and husband Ken, who live in Surrey. That's a good boy. Who's your picky then? Every morning he waits for his biscuit for breakfast. We've been married now for 54 years. 54 years, yep. Well, I've even got hair in those days. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, dear. Those were the days. A secret to a happy marriage is you've got to laugh a lot <laughs> and... Uh, what else? Yeah. One of the things I always say, you observe and say nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you forgive a lot uh, and you make up quickly. But their marriage hasn't been entirely full of laughter. In the 1980s, Bente was diagnosed with cancer. I saw the surgeon and he said, well, we've got to operate. And I said, excuse me, but I've got to go skiing first. And he said, Mrs Donegan, you better get your priorities right. You're coming into the hospital next week. <laughs> yeah. That was it. And that was the scariest time of my life. The hospital is building a new cancer centre and Bente wants to make a £200 donation by selling the autographed racing programme. 
I was standing around holding the program and a very nice driver came along and said, would you like some of the autographs of all the drivers? So I said, oh, yes, please. And he was very handsome as well. <laughs> I nearly lost it to a racing driver, actually. <laughs> I got Graham Hill, John Surtis, Innes Ireland, Jack Brapham, Jim Clark. So, really, I got all their famous ones. I've just kept them in a the drawer for all these years. And if you can give something back as a thank you, that's what I'd like to do. In London, Michael is assessing young businesswoman Lauren's gold watch. So this is, uh, this is something Hello. is quite special. It's a nice watch. Right. Actually, it's a gorgeous watch. Gerard Perrigue, they are a top Swiss brand and they command high prices at retail. So you're looking at like 20, 30, 40, 50,000 pounds plus. These sorts of watches crop up at auction quite a lot. So we can, we can easily find out what sort of value it has. The customer's looking for 20,000 pounds. 20,000 pounds sounds more like a retail price for this, but you know, we'll figure out exactly what we can do first. Not all unwanted heirlooms and unredeemed jewellery go on to be sold. Some meet a different fate. They're going to be melted down. Oh, into... my God. No. Oh, no, Let's horrible. have a look at that ring a minute. What? <laughs> Will you look where you're at? Oh, it's not oh, your Oh, come on. No, lot's going to be sent away. We send thousands and thousands of pounds worth of unwanted gold to the smelters every month. It can come to a small fortune. Pour it all in. Pour it all in. 2,562 grams. Fantastic. So, what's next? Hi, Steve. Hi. Hi. How are you doing, mate? You all right? How are you? Nice and warm in here. Uh, yeah. So, this is the... What's this, this called? This is the furnace. This is the furnace. It? This is an induction furnace. Uh, You'd like to put the clear glass on for a bit of safety. Yep. You must be really hot, Steve, all day long down here. Yeah. It does get a bit warm. What, what have you got on under there? That's it. <laughs> is, that, is that it? I thought it might be. I'm getting hot. I've always wondered how my gold, uh, how it turns out and how it ends up, so it's a really interesting process. You're always hoping for a big block, obviously, but it's never guaranteed. What's that, Steve? Not baby oil, is it? It's a mixture of oil and carbon dressing. It just stops the metal sticking to the cast iron moulds. And all that's left is to cast it. Is that going to cool down? That will cool quite rapidly. It's not very gold-like, is it? No. Just looks like a bit of old... Um, it's because of the silver, copper. copper and zinc still in the alloys. That's looking more and more gold-like by the minute. That's cool enough for you to hold That's now. cooled down, has it? I like this. Yeah. All I need is a chain. Yes. Before James can get a price, the gold bar is sent away for testing. Its purity will decide if he's sitting on a small fortune or not. It's the end of the week at Hatton Garden. Prestige, Joy speaking. And James has arrived back from the gold smelters. Cakes, lovely. A chocolate cake. I've got coffee. Lovely. Good job we think differently. I've got a bar of gold. Fantastic. Bar, did it? Yeah, it was two and a half kilos. Oh, that was good. Pretty amazing. It's hot down there. He was in the nude apart from a boiler suit. Oh, God. He might have had something on No, I asked him. Why? Because it's no good standing next to a man in the nude not knowing about it, apart from his boiler <laughs> suit. I'm not, we won't be able to use them again. Of course we will. Oh, Probably get God. a discount now. No wonder it was a bar and a half. James has to wait for a valuation on the gold bar but for the moment, he's off to meet a client in the country. Two weeks ago, entrepreneur Joel approached the pawn shop with his double-decker bus, which he hopes to sell for £55,000. I really need the money for the house that me and Alex are buying. I know a price that I need and, you know, I'm, I'm going I'm to kind of stick to it. I must be mad. I'm in the middle of Sussex, pouring down with rain. But, you know, I'm here and a deal's a deal at the end of the day. I've got the champagne, so we can crack it open. When, uh, when, we, when we get to a deal. But Joel's got his work cut out to win him over. Oh, my God. 
Oh no, what have I done? Joel, how are you? He's brought his bus driver mate Adam along to show James the ropes. The brakes work in it, do they? Yeah, it completely. Nice little bonus. Yeah. It's a big monster, isn't it? You don't really yeah. get a feel for it in the images, but it's no. just so huge. Yeah. It's such a big expanse of, yeah. uh, of bus. Come in, James, I'll show you around. Lovely. Here this we is are. the kitchen, is it? This is it. So you've got a fully fitted kitchen, wood burning stove for your heat. I'll show you upstairs. Well, it's amazing that you've got a bedroom and a hallway out the width of a bus, to be honest with you. Yeah, so you've got a dining area at the front, single bedroom, and here we have a master. This is where it all goes on. This is where the magic happens. So I've always run it as a business, and I'm selling it as a business. And what sort so. of money do you get for it a day? Um, at the moment, I'm getting about 300 a day. So basically, commercially, this could actually get you a return? Commercially, it will get you a return. Well, the proof of the pudding's in the eating. Shall we give it a little test drive? We'll go for a drive. Yep. The last time I got on a bus was when I went to school, so it was a long time ago. And this was going to be a real experience for me. I'm on the upper deck of a bus. I don't know what the driver's doing. <laughs> this, this is, I don't know what he's doing. I he's out of control. I'm going to have to show him how it's done in a minute. Well, I've got to have a little go in it, haven't I? I've tested all sorts of vehicles. How hard could driving a bus be? You ready, Joel? No. Joel, you'll be fine, mate. Trust me. Is there any insurance for household contents? Hey, Stevie. <laughs> I didn't get off to the best start. It wasn't probably as easy as I thought. Right, you've driven a bus before? Um, not quite. Once you get motoring it, it's quite a nice feeling. It's a good drive. Yeah. Yeah, I can get used to this. You never know, we might come across a couple of passengers. After a couple of miles, I felt I was getting into my stride, but Adam was still looking a little bit nervous. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, cool. Keep people breaking, keep people breaking. Yeah. Keep people breaking, keep people breaking. Yeah. 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 Um, I mean, I was approaching that corner, I felt at a reasonable speed, and then I heard that sort of crashing and ripping and tearing of metal, and then it all dawned on me. That's the far right hand side. Oh, God. Maybe a few more lessons. Joel, yeah. I'm really sorry, mate. <laughs> I can't believe I trashed the bus. All these years of driving vehicles, and I've never even had a parking dent. Now, look, I know we talked about numbers, but you've got to bear in mind that a three-wing bus now is obviously worth a lot less than a four-wing bus. Yeah, I know. I what mean, you mean. the three-wing variety of, are rare. Yeah, yeah. Um, but they're not very sought after. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's definitely someone out there for it. I mean, 55 grand and the security of somewhere to live, it yeah. don't sound like a lot of money. No. So I'm going to get back to the office, yeah, get absolutely. everyone working on it. We'll see if we can get it done for you. Perfect. It's been, been a great day out. It's been I'm a pleasure. Sorry about that. <laughs> Send me the bill. Will do. It'll get fixed up, this damage. Overall, yeah, it's been a really good day. Hopefully he'll, um, he'll make an offer and hopefully we'll, uh, we'll come to a deal. It goes all right and it's been decked out to a standard, but it needs a little bit of TLC. There's little bits and pieces on it that aren't quite right, namely, the front right wing. Back in Hatton Garden, it's all hands on deck as eShop manager Joy gets client Suzanne's 12 items valued. All the items that we got from Suzanne, they, um, you know, they're very unique, so we have to give a lot of time to, to do research on each one of them, you know, to, to give this a respect that is deserved. Gemologist Alicia is appraising Suzanne's diamond jewellery. The earrings are definitely the better one out of two. The ring won't, won't be that much money. It's actually old cut diamonds. 
For one thing, they're out of fashion, and second thing, the actual size of the stone seems much larger than what you can charge the client for because the top of the diamond is a lot smaller in comparison to the rest, so proportions are not so good. But earrings, very good big stones. I'm sure we can make a decent offer. These bags were made for Ferrari. Well, you can smell, smell the money. Yeah. You can smell it. Can yeah. you smell the leather? Yeah. yeah. OK, all right, I'll come back Thank to you. Thank you. All right, thanks, Joy. Don't touch it. Don't work too hard. Oh, who's going to work hard if I don't? Suzanne is banking on her collection being worth £6,000, so she can buy two rings from the e-shop for £4,000 and have some cash in hand. But can they offer her the amount she wants? You right, Josephine? Oh, watch her. How are you? Good. How was the bus? I ripped one of the wings off, didn't I? You've ripped one of the wings off his yeah, bus? Yeah, I tore it off. It was an accident. Oh, my <laughs> God! You're supposed to be going out there making know, the company the some money <laughs> and now you can have to fork out cos you've smashed the client's I thing know. up. I think they were glad to see the back of me by the time I left there. Oh, my God, I think you really need to try hard, then, if you've put him through that. I'll have to get everyone on this one. This is going to be yeah. a real tough one to find yeah, someone. definitely. All, All right, right, well, well <laughs> at least geez. you're in one piece. Unlike the bus. <laughs> Weybridge, Lawrence is working on a valuation for Ken and Bente's signed motor racing programme. This is a very exciting item. One of the most desirable uh, racing autographs is Jim Clark. Now, Jim Clark on his own can easily go for £1,000 a signed photograph. And remember, you've got Sterling Moth in there, Jack Brabham. To raise the £200 the couple want, he's liaising with autograph expert Mark. Bent is actually doing it for charity, so I really want to push on this one. And Mark's a very generous guy, so I think I'm going to actually put the squeeze on him a little bit to get a bit more money out of him. Hello, mate. How you doing? Hello, Lawrence. How you doing, Sam? Good. Lovely to see you. You bought me something nice? Oh, very nice, I think. Right up your street. Let's have a look. Well, some big names in there. The biggest. Jim Clark. Jim Clark. That's, that's beautiful. F1 yeah. is on the up. Yeah. It's getting more and more collectible. Yeah. The problem that we've got, Lawrence, is, is displaying it. Yeah. Or in a presentation, because of the autographs are all over the place. Jim Clark died very young, so his signatures are very hard to come by. And when you're looking at something like that, when you've got multiple signatures, it's the one that stands out, and it's the Jim Clark stuck out a mile. If the Jim Clark was on an album page, Lawrence, I'd be fighting you over it. Yeah. Or even, in fact, on the front there. Yeah. Because the presentation would be a lot easier. Yeah. It doesn't take it away from being a lovely, lovely collector's piece. Even that programme would be collectible. Yeah. It's beautiful, mate. Yeah. It's absolutely beautiful. A lovely collection of old vintage autographs there, yeah. which you couldn't get today. And that Jim Clark is wonderful. Yeah. And it, it, obviously, it's a bit of a way about the tear, but yeah. 54 years it's been hanging you around. Can't, you what do you expect? expect that. Two shillings. I don't know. How about that? See you soon, mate. See you later. Bye-bye. Mark is not usually the most excitable person, but he got really excited at the Jim Clark autograph. I've got an idea in my head of what it's worth. All I can do is hope that I get the money she's looking for. It's not only clients that have to wait for their valuations. James is also expecting a call with news of his two and a half kilo gold bar. Should be getting a call any minute from the gold melters. Feeling a bit anxious. I don't know how much it's going to come to. There's a heavy old bar. We'll see what it comes out at. Should be a nice few quid. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I'll probably end up buying some more gold. Prestige. I have your result ready for you today. Fantastic. Well, that's really good. Cheers. See you later. Bye. Bye. Yes. Joe. Lee's just called. She's uh, got the results. It comes out of thirty-two thousand six hundred ninety-six pound fifty p. Really? Yeah. That stuff you showed me that was going off. Thirty-three grand. Yeah. Well, yeah that's good, that. isn't it? So it's sitting over there at the minute, and we can have the money transferred into the account. Thank you very much. Put a smile on your face, wouldn't it, for the weekend? I don't know if it'll last that long. In Essex, 
Suzanne? Yeah? Would you like a cup of tea? No, thank you. Suzanne is waiting to find out whether the 12 items she's taken to the pawn shop will raise £6,000. Suzanne's list was a long, long list, starting from jewellery to a scarf to very unique handbags, which she wanted to swap with the um, couple of rings that she saw in the e-shop. The two rings are for sale at just under £4,000. I'm just really, really, really desperate for the phone call and I can't wait. I mean, I've got the phone by my side and I'm like, ring, ring, ring. Suzanne is a very good customer, so I am worried that if we can't meet what she's expect her expectation, that we may never see her again. So it is a tough one and um, I feel awfully nervous about it. Hello? Hi, Suzanne. It's Joy, how are you? Oh, nervous, very nervous. Why are you nervous? There are three items which are not for us. What ones are those? Uh, Vivian Westwood, cuff right. flamed. Right. It is, unfortunately, not an authentic piece. Oh, wow. And what else? OK, so the pearls. OK, so you don't want to take the pearls? Yeah, because we hardly sell any. One more, I think this, um, you know, Gucci watch is not for us. My heart's dropping, Joy. We couldn't take three of Suzanne's item, but um, she still have nine that we could make an offer on. I know you're expecting about six grand. Right. OK. Uh, if you want to have these as a part exchange... Yeah. ..the price going to be um, £2,500. You are joking. Yeah, I am not. No way, no, I'm not going to take that, no. Do you um, want to um, have a think about it? No, I'm not having a think about it. I know now, absolutely not. OK. Absolutely n n no way on this earth. I'm sorry about that. Thanks, Joy, thanks for letting me know. Take care, bye. <sighs> I'm sweating. <laughs> That is absolutely crazy, absolutely crazy, crazy, crazy. 2,500. 2,500. That, that is a major absolutely. disappointment. I don't know what to say. I'm just uh, totally gutted. There's massive difference between the new retail prices and the second-hand value, and some of the clients find it hard to understand that. The ups and downs of making a deal are all part of the pawnbroking business. They'd offer you 1,750. After rejecting Joy's offer of a £2,500 part exchange towards two rings she hoped to buy, Suzanne's paid another visit to the online store. I've had a change of mind. I was just absolutely gutted about the outcome. I looked at the e-shop and I saw these earrings and they were absolutely beautiful. And um, as soon as I saw those, it was a no-brainer. Suzanne is going to trade her items against the earrings she set her heart on and is back on the phone to Joy. Hello. Oh, hi, is that Joy? Hi, Susan, oh, how are hi. you? I think I'd, I, I'd like to go ahead with... The plan. OK. okay. Oh, wow, um, that's, um, that's, um, yeah. that's nice to hear. Yeah, it's time to... Let those things go now, and I'd like a pair of earrings. OK, all right, my darling, so what I'll do is um, I'll do some paperwork and everything and then post out the earrings to you. Is that all right? Oh, that's excellent. That's really kind. Okay. All right, and Susan, you have a good evening. Take care, Thank bye. You, bye. After all that, Suzanne accepted 2,500 as a part exchange to um, a lovely pair of earrings for 3,500. She's happy and um, I am happy. So, <laughs> good news all round, I think. And actually, the earrings are brand new, so it'd be brilliant. I can't wait. Lauren and Doraj are in Hatton Garden to find out how much the gold watch belonging to Lauren's grandfather is worth. 20,000 is the price we asked for. That should help us invest more into our jewellery business that we've just started. It's a nice watch, uh, well made, well presented, but they are wanting a lot of money for it. Hi, Michael. Hi, how are you guys doing? Yes, yeah, really well. How are you? Good. You were looking for how much? Uh, £20,000. £20,000. Okay. 
The £20,000 is quite high. Yes. We look back at you know, auction figures. Ten years ago, they were selling for a much higher price. OK. Now, uh, looking at auction prices, they're unfortunately very low. OK. Um, I hate yeah. saying it, but you, you're looking at about £2,000. Is it? Oh, OK. But that's disappointing, it but is. we'll hold on to the watch. Definitely. If it's 10 days. Obviously, you're more than welcome to take a loan against it if you're just needing money now. I think, to be honest with you, we're going to just keep hold of it. Um, we can um, try and see what we can do and go and see a few clients and see if maybe we could get more than the asking price of auctions. That's completely fine, no of course. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Sorry. Clearly, the £20,000 they <laughs> were wanting um, is, in my opinion, a pipe dream. To be honest with you, I'm not actually that disappointed because I get to keep it now, which I'm really happy about. But as for the money side of thing, my granddad already invested in us. We have got enough money to keep us going. Um, so hopefully we'll be back with maybe some more items in the future. In Hove, cafe owner Joel is waiting for news on a deal for his double-decker bus. He liked the bus, he liked the business concept of it. He was good at driving it, apart from a slightly small accident that he had. I feel a little bit nervous about talking to him um, because I haven't actually touched base with him since the accident. So I'm hoping he's still talking to me. I'm hoping for 50,000 for, for the bus, but, you know, let's see what, see what he offers I'm hoping for. Yeah, I'm hoping for an offer, but not too little. But, yeah, 50,000 is what I would like. This has been a real tough one for me. I mean, there is a massive range in price, and I'm really, I really have been struggling with this one. Fingers crossed. There you go. Hello? Joel, hi. It's uh, James here from Prestige. How are you? Very well. How are you? Yeah, I'm good, mate. How's the bus? The bus is good. Yeah, it's still, uh, it's still going well. I can't apologise enough about that. No worries. How much are you actually looking for? But I think 55 is, uh... It's bang on, really, on a, on a trade kind of value. Um, but what are you thinking? I must say to you, as of today, I haven't got someone for it. OK. Um, so... I'm... I know that's probably a little bit of a disappointment to you. How do you feel that's about okay. that? Is that an opportunity to maybe pawn it to get to release some money, or is that, or is that yeah. not an option? Because of the storage costs involved, to yeah. be honest with you, it would cost you so much money. It wouldn't be viable. Uh, what I would like to do is to keep working with it and, okay. I will advertise. and we will try and find someone for it. That's positive. Uh, we'll go from there, if that's OK. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. I mean, if you can um, do anything with it um, over the next couple of weeks and see where we can get to. OK, mate. All right, oh, yeah. lovely. Well, good to speak to you and I'll be in yeah, touch. OK, okay. thanks, Bye. James. Bye. 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 You don't sell those things in a few days. They just don't... It doesn't happen that way. Um, he wants decent money for it, and uh, to get decent money, you're going to have to market it properly, and it's going to take time. Unfortunately, my wedding's off now because James <laughs> doesn't want to buy the bus. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm only joking. To find someone for a two-bedroom house is hard enough. To find someone for a mobile two-bedroom house um, with three wings is even harder. So as long as it goes on his website, thousands of people all around the world are going to see it, so it's all right. <laughs> In Surrey, Ken and Bente are hoping their racing programme will make a tidy sum for charity. I really am so excited and can't wait to hear how much Lawrence comes up with. I've got the uh, final figure for the race programme. I'm a little bit hesitant because I actually like to know what the customer wants. I would be happy with as much as we can get for the charity. I don't know if it's two to three hundred or whatever, but we'll soon find out when Lawrence gives us a call. We're just on the on the brink of it all happening. <laughs> we can't wait. We've done a lot of work on this, so I'm just really hoping that Ken and Bentie are happy with the figure we give them. Oh, bear with. Oh, there we go. Oh, I didn't see him. I so. Hello, Bente speaking. Hello, Bente. It's Lawrence from Prestige. How are you? I'm fine. Just very excited about the amount you can get for it. 
Well, I hope we're going to go get the right amount for you. Oh, good. The only problem we had with it was it is very busy. There's a lot of signatures there. Effectively, you could have trebled your money, funny enough, if you turned it over and actually had the front of the programme signed by Jim Clark alone. Oh, that's a pity. So, but saying that, it's still a very, very lovely item. Mm-hmm. I mean, have you got any idea what you were looking for? Well, I said about two to three. Well, I can tell you that what we're offering you both. is 500. <gasps> 500? That's wow, that's fantastic. Oh, I'm really pleased. Oh, well, I'll give you a big kiss. <laughs> I'm really pleased that you're happy. Even I'll give you a big kiss as well. <laughs> Cheers. Thanks a lot, Bente. And say goodbye to Ken for me. Bye. Well, that's about made my day. Oh, yeah. that's brilliant. Oh, yeah. it really is so yes. Well done for doing that. Thank you. The cancer charity is going to be really happy, I hope, with £500. Our experts come through and made them a really good offer. Really, really pleased. And it's 500 quid going to a really good charity. That is a good day. Mm -hmm.